Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And <clears throat> thanks to everyone who is attending today and kudos for looking into uh, cybersecurity as a possible career choice. And uh, thanks so much for the introduction. That was very kind. Um, as mentioned, I serve as the lead for academic engagement within the NICE program office. Um, that is led by NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which is part of the US Department of Commerce. And so just very quickly so that everyone um, sort of understands a, a little bit about uh, NICE's role and also so that perhaps you want to go there and find out additional information that might help you in the, in the career uh, pathway. Uh, NICE is a uh, convener more than anything. It um, is a convener with bringing groups together, academia, um, government agencies, industry, so that we're all sort of working in, in unison and we're, we're um, having a holistic view of developing the cybersecurity workforce for uh, the nation. So our one of our mandate is every five years, we have to develop a strategic plan for cybersecurity career development or how to develop the cybersecurity workforce for the, the nation. That was um, submitted to Congress in November. And so now we are working on the implementation parts of that just very quickly, the five areas that we really try to focus. And so you are a part of um, this process in building and developing a really skilled cybersecurity workforce, but we want to, to try to promote the discovery and uh, exploration of cybersecurity careers and, and multiple pathways, let the public know what is available and the options that are out there. We wanna transform learning and that includes activities like this, where you, you don't need to go th four to eight years um, in, in academia. That is one pathway, but there are other options and we need to take advantage of those other options if we're going to make an impact in getting more people in the, in the workforce. Uh, modernizing the talent management process, that is a lot to do with HR departments and how they um, have job descriptions and matching what industry really needs to the correct job descriptions. Uh, focusing on the NICE, work, uh, NICE framework, which I'll talk about in just a second, and then above all, trying to connect this with research of what we know in other domains. So with that, uh, you're, if, you're, if you're not familiar with, you probably will be as you um, dive deeper into this particular career opportunity. And there are two uh, frameworks. One is the NIST framework that basically sets out the guidelines for um, what to do to reduce the amount of risk that you're willing to take on in your particular um, company or um, even at home, if you will. And then the NICE framework talks about who needs to actually be doing those things to reduce risk. So within the NICE uh, framework, one of the things that I think is really important for this community to understand is that the, the stereotype of um, cybersecurity is only computer science or it's somebody with a hoodie in a basement hacking into somebody else's computer. Um, the, those are possibilities, hopefully not that, that second one that is, we don't want you to go into that aspect of it, uh, but there are a wide range of possibilities. So within the NICE framework, it lays out the seven broad categories. So if you like to build things, there's a security provision, if you want to protect, or if you want to go into investigate with digital forensics, or perhaps you want to go into policy or actually teaching, um, those are all possibilities and some of them are not technical. So within the seven broad categories, there are 52 work roles. Those 52 work roles are what feed into the Department of Labor and into ONETs, um, the occupational um, classification schema. And what we have tried to do with the NICE framework is make it a little bit more user-friendly. And you can see the little schematic here that talks about how the, the work roles that are needed for cybersecurity, there's 
um, knowledge items, there are skills that are needed, and those knowledge and skills feed into are needed to perform particular tasks for particular work roles with the understanding that um, cybersecurity is made up of teams and each of those teams, um, each person will have multiple work roles, not just one, uh, but one will be the a majority of your work time, but there are, um, you probably will have multiple so the big takeaway here is that there is something for everyone. And we really wanna emphasize that there are multiple work roles, there are multiple opportunities, there are multiple pathways to get there. And that's what's really needed and um, need to take advantage of. So within the categories you can see here, um, I'm, I'm not gonna read through all of these, but just to give a little snapshot again, securely provision is more about designing and building things uh, securely from the onset. And then the um, operate and maintain as well as the protect and defend or more along, you know, supporting and the admin and the maintenance and um, identifying and analyzing risks and, and so forth. So you can see kind of the different buckets and what you need to think about is, well, what am I more interested in? What draws me into um, maybe skills that I already have and uh, that I can take advantage of? So for securely provision, uh, some particular work roles would be software developer, as well as security architect, systems developer, those are just examples. Um, oversee and govern, again, if you wanna go into legal or you wanna go into um, compliance, uh, you want to teach, um, Maybe you want to go into policy or into program management or um, project management. Those are all acquisition. Uh, those are all possibilities. And maybe you can draw on your um, earlier expertise and your um, existing skill set to kind of transition over. Uh, protect, and protect, uh, protect and defend. So incident responders, cyber defense analysts, those are just examples of, of work roles and um, operate and maintain database administrator and data analyst, which are expanding in leaps and bounds with uh, the amount of content and the data that is um, the focus on kind of data management, but also systems admin and technical support. So you can actually drill down if you go to the, the NICE website and you um, search for the NICE framework, you can drill down and you can actually see, and there are several tools and I'll try to share with you those tools so you can see, well, what, what exactly I think that I'm interested in X, what are some of the skills that I would be doing or some of the, the activities and the tasks that I would be performing if I was to go into that? So you can see if that's a, if that's a good match. Um, all of the tasks are list at, listed out, so you can actually cross map. I'm interested in this particular work role. What are some of the tasks for that? Um, you know, everything from establishing and maintaining communication channels with stakeholders. Um, you know, another is developing systems and architecture that it, architects, which is consistent with an organization's uh, cybersecurity guidelines. Um, there's also a list of skills as well as a, skill, uh, a list, long list of the knowledge statements. And this just allows you again to see what are the, the, um, what are the items that I need to cover? Maybe what do I already have? What do I ha already have a good school uh, skill set of? And what are the gaps that I might want to um, pursue in learning a little bit more of? I've highlighted this, um, the, the knowledge statements descriptions, because there are the first six knowledge statements within the NICE workforce framework are uh, found throughout all 52 work roles. So sort of a common body of knowledge on networking concepts and protocols around risk management, around laws and policies and ethics, privacy principles, 
knowing a little about cyber threats and vulnerabilities and um, business continuity. So those are all common knowledge content constructs that are found with all 52 work roles. So what we are doing now is uh, we, we updated the workforce, uh, the, the NICE framework, so that it was a little bit more user friendly. And currently what we are trying to do is come up with the competency statements, um, ways of uh, combining, if you will, the, the tasks, the knowledge and the skills that are needed for um, completing particular competencies, not only so that employers can be able to tell you know, your proficiency in, in those areas, but also so that um, educational entities, whether K-12 or higher ed, can start to develop um, curriculum. And so that all the little pieces are connecting and we're all starting to be on, on the same, um, same path in, in getting to our end goal of making a very knowledgeable and skilled workforce. We did have a open uh, call for, for comments on the competency areas and that closed. And now we're having several um, workshops to dive deeper with stakeholders. And actually next week, we have a couple of workshops that are connecting with the educational community to, to make sure that we're all on track. And this is just kind of a slide, slide deck that you can maybe see uh, um, if you wanted to go back, but it kind of puts in place the connection between the competencies, the tasks, knowledge, and skill statements, and then the particular work roles that we want everyone to understand. So with that in mind, and a little bit of background, uh, some common questions here you might be interested in. What, well, how do I get into cybersecurity or perhaps change to a, to a different work role if you're already in it? Um, and where do I start? And these are common questions that we often get asked within the NICE program office. And so hopefully you can see from that little brief um, overview that I provided is, Whenever we're asked that, the next question we, we always turn around and ask is, well, what are your interests and which pathway are you thinking about going into? Because again, cybersecurity is not a monolithic entity. It's across multiple industry sectors and there are multiple possibilities, whether it's technical or non-technical. So you need to, to have an understanding of your particular interest and maybe your skill sets and what, what you already have that you can transfer in, as well as which pathway are you thinking about going into, a, you know, a, um, a just a boot camp, or maybe a special um, academy like the, the one that is uh, being launched here in Virginia, or are you thinking about a two or four year, um, you know, educational formal educational setting? So the pathways would would be different. So one of the things that I wanted to make you aware of, if you're not already, and that is there is a tool out there. It's called CyberSeek, CyberSeek.org. And the tool, uh, we help fund it. It is a partnership between CompTIA and Burning Glass that basically scrubs the, the job um, openings throughout the US and tries to keep track of them. And then from that, we have um, sort of a baseline nationally. What are the total job openings in the US? Uh, and from that, you can also see the top job titles that are being asked for. Um, you can also search by either public sector or private sector. It also allows you to drill down into your state level. So here in Virginia, since this um, program is within Virginia, you can see that the total current total job openings are close to 50,000. And from that, you can also see the top job titles that are that are coming across those job boards. You can also see the, the categories that I mentioned before. So the majority of uh, job openings within Virginia at this time are in the operate and maintain and the securely provision category. And then you can also see the certifications that are being asked for. So, um, you know, which, which ones are in high demand. Um, 
And, and this is really important when you're trying to figure out the pathway that you want to go into. Certainly, uh, we want people to go into cybersecurity no matter which area, um, but if you are interested in staying in a particular area and uh, you, you, wanna, you want to make sure that what you're investing in, your time and your effort is uh, going to have a job at the end for you. And so it's nice to kind of track and see this data and see what's being asked for. You can also narrow down even further into the different areas within. So here you can see the difference between Richmond, Virginia, and then the Northern Virginia area. Now, what's kind of interesting in here, I know it's a little higher when it was only about 50K for Virginia, but that's because this is including the Washington, Northern Virginia area. So you're getting the Maryland, West Virginia that area included in here. But again, you can see that's a large number of uh, job openings. Uh, you can search for the job titles that are in the highest need currently and what categories and then what certifications. And there's a, lots of other data here too. So that's cyberseek.org that you might wanna take a peek at and just search around and gather a little bit more information. What's kind of interesting in connecting it to um, the, the program, the academy program is that when you, and I just did the example here for the reskilling, uh, re the upskilling would be very similar. So you go through the same, um, the, the same comparison, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, folks were aware that the opportunity that is available here. So for example, one of the courses is um, the security essentials, uh, no, the hacker tools, techniques, and exploits is preparing you for this uh, GCIH certification. And if you look online to explore a little bit more in depth of what that includes, you can not only go more in depth, but you can see the cost for that. So here's an op a great opportunity to, um, to, to have um, access to some, some great courses that you know from looking at the data that um, CyberSeq provides are certifications that are in high need. And here's an opportunity at a uh, much lower cost. And the same thing with the Security Essentials Bootcamp and the um, GSEC uh, Security Essentials certification and the cost if you were just doing that outside of this academy. You can also see that they have highlighted in the academy the uh, sample job titles that hopefully would uh, this would be applying to. And when you look at the data from the Northern Virginia of the job titles that are being um, are in highest need, and I pulled them down so you can see them, made it a little larger here, but you can see that get the comparison. So, you know, the information security analyst. So the cybersecurity analyst, a lot of the, the terms, IT, um, IA, cybersecurity, somewhat different in cases, but uh, other cases in the job descriptions. That's why we're trying to work in that talent management and um, have some better consistency with the job descriptions and job titles, but very similar. And the same thing with uh, system administration, um, and you have system admin down here, the IT specialist, and you have your cybersecurity specialist, the technicians. So it's very much in, in tune with what the data is showing is in high need for this particular area. So a great opportunity. So exploring sort of the career exploration roadmap, uh, there is a, another within the CyberSeq, there's a uh, second tool that's associated with this, and that is the career pathway tool. It gives you another little snapshot in terms of, okay, if I'm starting here, where can I go to? And so just an example, if you were really interested in the networking aspect, um, that's what you're um, Maybe you have some prior skill sets in that area. Maybe you're just drawn to um, finding that interesting. You know, what are the possibilities? So with networking uh, here, and this is more interactive and more fun if you were, you were live than just a static 
um, PowerPoint slide, but uh, if you were clicking on networking, it gives you a little interesting, you know, overview nationally. This is um, for national, but you could scoop down into the, the state and the regional areas as well. But you see the common job titles and the certifications requested and the top skill sets requested and the skills needed to be added to this. Um, but you can also see where that sends you. So where you can go from networking, what are some other possibilities, you know, how would you get there? So you would go from your feeder role into um, networking from an entry level, and then where could you go moving forward? So something that is really important with the cybersecurity is the understanding that it's not static. You're always going to be able to continue to gain skills, to learn more, and to progress. So it's not sort of a dead-end job, if, if you will. So with that in mind, I just wanted to um, give you those resources and uh, have you be able to explore a little bit more. Certainly there are other opportunities available just through this um, career fair, as well as the resources that they give you online. But just another um, trying to, uh, waving the banner, trying to get you to consider a career in cybersecurity. Uh, one, a couple things to keep in mind is one, cybersecurity um, careers for all. There is something for everyone, whatever your love in your particular industry. If you are interested in healthcare, there's a connection. If you're interested in, um, you know, publications and communication or marketing, there's a connection there. So there's something for everyone. There's an increased need for skilled cybersecurity workforce. I think daily you hear about the breaches and the um, ransomware attacks and the this and the that. And uh, in the digital age, we're, we're, that's not going to really go away at least very, um, very quickly. So there's an increasing need for more and for more that are highly skilled. So this is a, a great opportunity. The other thing to keep in mind is that it's a great opportunity for transferable skills. So there are skill sets that are really needed in cybersecurity in all of the work roles that are um, not necessarily technical, but communication and teamwork and critical thinking and, um, you know, IT and keeping up with, um, with learning. And all of those are transferable skills that could be applied so that you're not starting from just ground zero. So keep that in mind. Also the job flexibility. So if you were in education and you want to get out of education, but we really need you in education, but let's say you want to get out, uh, you could, still teach and teach cybersecurity. That's one way of keeping you in both spots, but you could also easily in cybersecurity go into a whole new industry step sector. So there is, um, it's not that cybersecurity is in just one domain, it's multiple, especially in this uh, new era with everything being connected. So the job flexibility, flexibility across the US even internationally and globally. So maybe you want to um, do some travel. You know, there's all sorts of opportunities there. Um, oops, here we go. Uh, cybersecurity workers are part of a dynamic industry. So uh, again, so many new things, um, internet of things, everything in the households being connected and gadgets right down to Barbie dolls and you know toy gadgets, um, AI, uh, quantum coming out, new privacy issues coming out. It's just a really dynamic industry and it's kind of fun to see it, it growing. And if you have an opportunity to sort of get in at the beginning, it seems like it's been around for a while, but it's really on the on the front end, um, a great opportunity. And again, more than just computer science or a hacker, there's um, non-technical as well as the technical areas. So something again for everyone, diversity, 
really, really important in order to really meet the requirements for cybersecurity, we need to be able to think differently. We need to think of think through, um, you know, get into the head of what um, others and hackers might be doing, um, and how are ways that we can counteract that. And that takes multiple perspectives. And we have to have to look through that through the lens of diversity is really going to give us um, an advantage if we we can't just keep doing the same old thing and hoping something different is going to happen. We need different thought processes. So um, different gender, different racial, different backgrounds from the beginning, neurodiversity, all of that uh, is really, really important. And then one of the biggest things I think is um, really important is that you're making a difference in the global society. I think that is really important to think about if you want a career that is going to, to do something that you're, you feel good about, that you're going to make a difference, cybersecurity has something for you. So with that in mind, I will also um, just give a couple of plugs here that you know other opportunities are through different competitions so uh, you know you have a great partner one of the great partners who's helping with this particular program has um, connections with lots of different competitions and those hands-on competitions are ways for you to um, dabble around and see what you're more interested in. Maybe you go into a social engineering competition and you say, hey, that's really what I, I enjoy that. And you're drawn into that particular area. Or maybe it's with digital forensics or maybe it's with cryptology. But these, uh, these competitions allow you to explore and figure out where your passion really, really lies. The other really key point in any of the STEM fields, but I think especially in cybersecurity is having mentors and connections, the networking, that's so, so important. And so um, a great partner here for mentoring, they do a fabulous job. They have an active online um, uh, Twitter and, and all sorts of social media engaged in lots of conference and just a disclaimer, I am part of this group. So I'll just mention that. It is a terrific uh, opportunity, but I can't emphasize enough that the networking and the mentoring are really, really critical. They help you navigate kind of the landscape and make the connections, which are so important. So with that, um, I, I will end and ask if there are any questions that, that you might have um, and hope that you will consider a, a great career in cybersecurity. Awesome. Thank you, Davina. Um, great presentation. Love all of the resources. Uh, we did have a question. Mm -hmm. um, will you share the PowerPoint? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Because everybody's like, oh, this is great information. They want to see all the stuff. So um, yes, absolutely. Be awesome. We'll share it out probably next week. Okay. Um, again, thank you so much for being on. Thank you for being a member of the Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu and for being a part of this, this whole initiative.